Give us a sense of the challenges of creating a show that, in a world where there's so many dark superheroes now, you're giving us something hopeful and more hopeful. Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, the world is, can be a really dark place for a lot of people, and I think that everyone's daily lives have a have a lot of challenges, and, and life can be hard, and um, there's something really nice about being able to escape into a sort of a, a fun and, and hopeful world. And I think the thing about Superman and Supergirl is sort of the foundation of those characters is hope. And so for us, it's, you know, we, we do Arrow, we do Darker, um, but the opportunity of Supergirl is to create, is to expand the tone and palette of what these shows and films can be. How do you keep the story <clears throat> faithful to Supergirl, but also reined in on a TV show budget? Because Supergirl can't fight a superpowered villain every week, throwing people through buildings and stuff like that. It's just not feasible. Or can she? Um, well, you know, part of what we do and what's so great about, like, Greg uh, Berlanti and Andrew Kreisberg having, you know, and then I work with them also on Flash and Arrow, and you'll notice that the complexity of each of those shows in terms of the CGI and the visual effects expands. Arrow's a really stunt-based show. Flash, obviously, is more. And part of why we're so excited to be on CBS is the kind of financial support to deliver what the audience comes has come to expect. I mean, there's so many options people have. And um, what CGI has done has allowed us. I mean, look, here's a little spoiler alert. Melissa Benoist can actually fly, so that helps us save a lot of money. Um, Good casting. Yeah, it, it made it a lot easier. It, it really it narrowed the pot. Um, but uh, for us, it's all about careful planning and really thinking ahead. You know, Greg and I just produced this film, Pan, and we've spent two years on the visual effects of creating Neverland. And now with Supergirl, we did it in two months. And that's all about sort of knowing what you want. And uh, But our hope is that nobody feels cheated. We have to deliver a cinematic experience on a weekly basis, and, and we want to. That's what our fans deserve, and that's what we want to show them. This is the first time that we've seen an iconic super, female superhero, like Supergirl, since Linda Carter's Wonder Woman. Do you guys feel any pressure in, in going into this first season? Um, you know, I feel like it's not so much pressure as um, we're so excited to have the opportunity. I personally feel like there aren't enough female superheroes or heroes. And, you know, across all the shows that Greg and I do, it's really important to have strong, strong female characters. And you see them in all of our shows. Uh, and, you know, Blind Spot is another one where you have a really strong woman. But Supergirl is, she's iconic, and she has an opportunity to show little girls and little boys how powerful women can be. So for us, it's not daunting. It's we're just so grateful to the opportunity that Warner Brothers and CBS have given us to share what should be a far more common occurrence. So do you think that's what will draw the audience to like the show? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, it's just it's loud. Do you think it's what will draw the audience to like the show? Is this what what will what? What will draw the audience oh, to think, like the show? Look, I, I think it is one of the draws to the show. But I think regardless of gender. If you like superheroes, you will like Supergirl, and she just so happens to be a woman. But what's great about that is it actually adds an extra level of complexity. You know, when the idea of first doing this came up, I sort of turned to Greg and I was like, Supergirl, Supergirl, we have to do Supergirl. And he's like, I have to think about, like, how do we do it? And then he called me and he said, I got it. It's like Ginger Rogers. Ginger Rogers has to do everything Fred Astaire does, but backwards and in heels. And so that's sort of what Supergirl has to do, which makes it more, it's even more fun narratively, because the challenges are, are so much bigger, unfortunately. You know, I'd, lo I'd love for her to grow up in a world where it, it, she doesn't have to do, it's not harder, but for right now it is. And so I think to offer this sort of symbol of hope and possibility and the equal footing is, I, I think it's, it's our responsibility, and it's everyone's responsibility to continue to embrace strong female characters. Why Melissa? Why Melissa? I, I mean, mean, I know why, why but I'm not asking. Melissa. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Melissa Benoist was the first person that auditioned for this part, and I remember when she came in, and I turned to Allie and Greg, and I just said, like, well, this is going to be so easy. And then we saw hundreds and hundreds of very talented, wonderful actresses, but not one of them came close to Melissa. And so we started to say, oh, this is really hard. Um, but Melissa has every color under the sun, and I'm so excited for audience to see everything that she's capable of. I mean, comedy, action, drama, emotion, you know, and she is so incredibly likable. She sort of, it's like if Annie Hall was a superhero, and I think that what's so great about that is, you know, all of us feel a lot more 
like Annie Hall than Superman, you know? And I think that, that her sort of self-doubt and coming into her own gives the audience so many ways to connect to her as a person. You know, she's not like Superman. She wasn't born, uh, she, was, she didn't grow up like this until she was 13. She had no idea, she didn't have powers. And then she came to this world, which tells teenage girls to suppress their power and to suppress their individuality. And so for us to be able to show this woman, this girl growing into a woman and embracing everything that she's capable of, is, uh, it's not just fun, but it's really, I think it's quite important. And Melissa is just like, I cannot say enough of good things about her. We just fell in love with her to the point where, on more than one occasion, we told people that we're not making it without her. I mean, she is Supergirl. There was no doubt in our mind. Is there anything coming up uh, early on that you Last can't wait for the fans to see? You want them oh, to everything. tune in? I mean, everything. Any I moment, think, like, episode? I think uh, every episode is going to be an expansion of the universe. The pilot, you know, we had to fit a lot in. But what's so great is you get to get so much deeper into these characters. And you also have um, Kyler's playing, is playing Melissa's sister, who is Alex, who is a human girl, but is in a lot of ways more capable than Kara, which is also, I think, really exciting and a great message. And so you have that sister relationship, you have the work dynamic with Calissa Flockhart, who's amazing. You've got Jimmy Olsen in a whole new way. There's just, there's so much fun for us. There are so many stories to tell. And I think um, audiences should have a lot of fun.